everybody and welcome back to the channel. When I was growing up, I just missed the Masters of the Universe or He-Man boom of the 80s. I was able to play with some of my older brother's toys, but I didn't have the context of the cartoon. And so there was always something slightly mysterious about these figures because they weren't like any other toys that I used to play with. I grew up in the era of the real Ghostbusters and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And by this point, He-Man had kind of gone out of fashion and he wasn't really on the toy shelves as much anymore. However, we did have the film of Masters of the Universe and this became a touchstone for me as a child, as a gateway into the world and the universe of He-Man. And I have a great affection for this film, even though I haven't revisited it since I was a child and I know that it wasn't well received and is considered to be uh, pretty bad <laughs> by, by most people's estimations, I still have very fond memories and quite vivid impressions of Skeletor and He-Man in this film and some of the more magical uh, elements uh, were really quite striking to me as a child. So it was with great anticipation when Mattel announced a seven inch scale line of figures to celebrate this film and I knew instantly that I wanted to pick these guys up. I should point out that Mattel is not the first company to actually make toys of the movie line. We know that Super 7 did this a few years ago, but to me it seems only fitting that Mattel, the company that owns He-Man, should have a good stab at this. I will look at both of these figures in due course. I'll do a separate video for Skeletor, but today I'm going to take a look at He-Man. So as ever, let's start off by taking a look at this packaging. I think the first thing you're going to notice is that this is kind of oversized packaging. It's not that it's particularly tall, but it is very, very wide. And this is kind of unusual for Mattel and uh, for most toy lines, to be honest. I haven't seen this approach uh, taken very, very often. Uh, and this looks really good. Actually, this makes a really nice display piece in its own right. Now, there's not an awful lot to the branding. We have the Masters of the Universe logo, which is pretty nice. Uh, we have some blue uh, theme at the top there. And then it kind of just goes to black borders, which in and of itself, isn't particularly impressive but that window display is and the figure is posed in a really cool position that makes this instantly eye-catching and displayable so I think they've actually done quite a good job with this. If we then look at the side panel on one side we have this gorgeous artwork that I think is newly created uh, for this release and I think this looks really really nice this is very attractive if you, if you store your packaging on your shelf and have it uh, sideways uh, on a profile this is going to look really really good and it's going to distinguish it from the Skeletor figure as well. However, if we flip it and look at the other side, this is a little bit more uh, bland. It just has He-Man there and uh, yeah, it's up to you if you want to store it this way. That's <laughs> entirely your choice, um, but it seems a, a stark contrast to what we get on the other side. And then if we flip it over and look at the rest of the packaging, wow, we have some more gorgeous artwork and this is absolutely stunning. I love this. This is so displayable. Thankfully, it's largely text free. We can see some of the other figures in the line and wow, uh, this looks absolutely tremendous. So I love the approach to this packaging. I think it's really, really attractive. And then finally, if we look at the interior card inlay, we can see there is a, a sort of a diorama piece here. It's just a stone wall. It's not the greatest thing. It's not the most imaginative or the most uh, artistic or particularly interesting to look at, but it's something, I suppose, and it, it does its job. So let's open the figure up and take a look at He-Man. Now, I have to say, I'm tremendously impressed with this figure. I really like that it's in the seven inch scale. That makes a huge difference. It's nice to have it more in line with some of the other figures in my collection. And I think visually, this looks absolutely stunning. I think they've done a fantastic job. That being said, I do have to address the elephant in the room, which is the head sculpt. And on the first glance, this is a pretty atrocious likeness of actor Dolph Lundgren. But as I understand it, there are some mitigating circumstances here which kind of explain this. I believe there's some issues with the licensing of this film and what they can and cannot represent. I believe that Super 7 had a similar situation uh, and their creative way around this was to utilize conceptual artwork of one of the production designers instead. And I would imagine it's probably something similar here as well. So yes, the head sculpt is <laughs> disappointing <laughs> to say the least, but other than that, I think things take a massive upswing when we look at the rest of the figure because the sculpting is very nicely done. It looks like it's new. I don't believe we've seen this before. Uh, it, this it feels like it's unique, but however, I could be wrong because I haven't got a huge uh, collection of Mattel figures in uh, my personal collection. So uh, please do feel free to correct me on that one. But in terms of the detailing, wow, this looks absolutely fantastic. I love the armor pieces. It, it very finely, intricately uh, sculpted there with brilliant paint application, wonderful gold 
folds and some paint washes running through it to really highlight some of the detailing here. Uh, it's just so much to look at and I just think they've done a really, really nice job all over this figure. Everything looks really good and he's just a very eye-catching figure and just looks the way you'd want it to look in my opinion. I think, you know, Mattel have actually surpassed themselves because in my opinion they tend to have a, a, you know, a fairly low bar when it comes to this kind of detailing that we see in, in other uh, toy companies but they've really done an excellent job here and I have to commend them. I'm also delighted to see that they actually gave him a cloth cape as well. Now it's not quite as large as I would like but then to be fair it's not that huge in the film either so this does seem to be fairly accurate uh, but it's a really nice approach again. I love the gold trim at the bottom uh, of the cape there and this just looks really cool and adds a lot more depth and texture. He also has a pretty great articulation range as well. He's got a ball joint at the top of the neck there, allowing the head to spin all the way around. It can sort of wobble left and right, but I wouldn't really count this as articulation. It can look up and down, not a huge range of motion, but there's enough here. Now, it does have ball joints in the shoulders, which are great. Thankfully, that shoulder piece doesn't block this articulation too much, which is really good. He has a complementary bicep swivel, a double joint at the elbow, and he has a pin swivel at the wrist, allowing the hand to rotate all the way around, which of course also hinges forwards and backwards. There's two points of articulation in the torso. There's one in the upper chest area, which is a little bit difficult to get much out of, to be honest. You can see this is a ball joint here and it will allow him to move side to side, possibly lean left and right, but it is a bit restricted by that chest piece. But he does have the swivel at the waist, which is great. And as you can see, he can just about lean forwards and backwards a little bit as well. There's ball joints and hips allowing legs to kick out to the side. There's the complementary thigh swivel at the top there, which is pretty cool. The legs will kick forwards and they'll go back. And pleasingly, he has a double joint at the knee as well, allowing that lower leg to kick all the way back there. There's another swivel, this time at the calf, which is great. And he even has a ball joint in the ankle, allowing that foot to hinge forwards and backwards, but also pivot from side to side. He also comes with an absolute wealth of accessories, including alternate hands, a closed fist and a gripping hand, an alternate classic He-Man head, more on that later, a blaster, two daggers and his broadsword. I'm delighted to say he has no problems holding any of these accessories and they're all very nicely sculpted and quite well painted for the most part as well. And as you can see, he can hold both daggers here nice and comfortably. But what's even better, he actually has individual holsters for each of these daggers as well. Now, these are a little bit tricky to get in first time, but I assure you they will slot in. There's one on his belt and another on his ankle. His broadsword is really cool, it's suitably long, it looks perfectly in scale and again he has no issues holding it and of course it's very striking when he does and there's a number of different fun poses you can put him in here that I think look really striking. Once again he has a holster for this so you can amazingly uh, slide this in to his back, there's actually a place at the top and the bottom there to hold it nice and snugly and I think this is a really cool well thought out addition, I think this works really really well. Similarly, he has no problems holding his blaster either. My only criticism here is that he can't get his finger actually onto the trigger. There's no loose individual digit, which is uh, a shame, but that's a minor gripe. Otherwise, it still looks really cool and he holds it uh, really snugly. And I have to say, this is a, a unique and quite a fun prop. Again, he has a holster for this weapon, uh, which is nicely painted. And of course, it fits in very snugly there and looks really good. Okay, so I said I'd come back to this and I've got to talk a little bit about the alternate head. This is a really strange addition. Maybe it was done to sort of placate people because they know the likeness wasn't particularly great of Dolph Lundgren. Pure guesswork on my part, um, but it does seem like a really odd addition um, because, of course, it is the classic He-Man sculpt, which might appeal to a lot of people, but just doesn't look right with this body or this outfit at all. And it also looks a little bit out of scale. Now, that might just be me, but this just looks really weird. <laughs> It just does not look right to me at all. Um, so I'll be sticking with the, uh, the dolph head. But other than that, I have to say I really love these accessories and I think this is a pretty fantastic figure all in all. I think they've done a really nice job with this and they've actually raised the bar, in my opinion, of what Mattel can actually produce. This is a cut above their usual uh, fare. And of course, when you put them next to Skeletor and you have these guys crossing swords, I think they make for a really nice display piece and I think they're really very, very fun. So all things considered, I have to say I've been very pleasantly surprised by this figure. I think he's actually really nicely produced. I'd probably go as far as to say he's probably the stronger of the two between him and Skeletor. I love all of his accessories. I love his just overall look. I think it just looks a really nice figure when he's on display. And yeah, there's some strange idiosyncrasies when it comes to the sculpting of the head and the alternate head it looks a bit strange too. Um, but other than that, this is a really nice figure. And I think if you're a fan of Masters of the Universe, in particular of that film, then you're probably gonna wanna pick this guy up. 
If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.